So welcome to SRBO or Seek and Read the Book of the Lord. So if you have any questions, comment them below and I will study it. And if you want to study with me, that's that's better. So let's talk about John 1 1. Many Christians have debated this verse. It's, it's very controversial because there's a lot of interpretation of Christians, different denomination and sects of Christianity about this verse says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So I'm using the King James Version. So as a reference in original Greek, ori in original Greek, as it is say, in the beginning was the Logos, and the Logos was with Theos, or with God, and Theos was the Logos, or God was the Word. So that's a reference, but we are using King James Version, so let's let's be standard let's be standard so this is the bible that often used by christians so many christians king james version or an niv or anything else but the same thing in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god so can we accept that there's a god and there's a word that also god can we have two gods or can we have two persons of god the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 8, in 1 Corinthians 8, 6, let's start in verse 4 to 6, it says, As concerning therefore the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there is none other God but one. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many so in this world there's a lot of gods there's so many gods and there's so many lords but to us there is but one God so how many have how many God we have we only have one God the father of whom are all things and we in him and one Lord Jesus Christ by whom are all things and we by him so as a dis as a distinction between god and jesus christ there's a there's a there's a phrase about but to us there is but one god the father of whom are all things and we in him and one lord jesus christ by whom are all things and we by him so there's a word by if regarding jesus in in jesus christ so there's a by so According to original Greek, by is intermediary, or it means if re by when regar regarding Jesus, regarding to Jesus Christ, it means in intermediary. It means intercession. It means mediator. Okay, it means Jesus Christ is the is the reason why there's a thing like this. So Jesus Christ is the reason of things in heaven and in, on earth. So let's back to John 1 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Can we accept that there's a two God, that the, 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 the God and the Word, that the Word also God? Can we accept that? And what is the meaning of the word Lord when regarding Jesus Christ? According to Acts 2.31, let's read this verse. It says it's this. So, this is Acts, let's read, starting 31. He, seeing, okay, so let's start in verse 31. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand, of God exalted and having received of the power the promise of the Holy Ghost he had shed forth this which ye now see and hear for David is not ascended into heaven but he said himself the Lord said unto my Lord sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus 
whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. So, how Jesus Christ became Lord? Because God made him same Lord and Christ. So, Jesus Christ is not Lord by himself, but God made him a Lord. So, Jesus Christ has no power to become a Lord in by his own power, but God, in God's authority, Christ became our Lord and our Christ. Okay, that's why in 1 Corinthians 11, 3, Christ, Christ is the head of man, the man is the head of woman, and God is the head of Christ. So let's back in John 1, 1. So it's very clear in the Bible that we don't have two gods. We all accept that. And who is, the, who is God? The Father, Paul says. That is the explanation that there is a one God. And who is that one God? That is the Father. Even there's a lot of gods in this world. There is such, a, there's still a one God. And that is a pure monotheism. And that is the real, original, first century Christianity. Okay? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It's correct that the Word was God. But we don't have two gods. But is this two persons and one God? The Bible says we don't have two persons. We don't have even three or four or many uh, many persons of God. But te- instead, the Bible says 1 Corinthians 8, 6, that's very clear that we only have the Father and that is the one God. In verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him and without Him was not anything made that was made. So, let's let's study this first. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Some people say, some some scholars that believe that that verse is in the beginning means the beginning of the Gospel. And they have a point about that because in Luke 1 and Mark 1, this is the verse about that. Luke 1, let's read. It says it's this. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order of declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. And according to Mark 1.1, 1, 1, it says it's very clear. It's the same thing. They use the word in the beginning. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So, and also in First John himself, John himself, in First John one one to three, it says it's very clear. Let's read that which was from the beginning, what beginning? Which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness and shew unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen, and heard, and declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So they are telling, some people, some scholars, theologians believe that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That is just meant to say that the beginning means it's the beginning of the gospel. It's like the beginning of the ministry of Jesus Christ. When he was baptized, the Holy Ghost came into him, and then he started his minister of the the gospel. He shared the gospel and, and performed some miracles. So some people believe on that. But let's let's be more complex, you know, right? Like let's let's dig on a big study about this verse John one one. So all interpretations and all analyzations, conclusions about this John one one, this verse, is they have all points. They have all their very strong arguments and and I I don't blame them because they just want to serve God and me as well, I just want to serve God. But let's look other analyzation and conclusions about this verse. So let's look in Genesis 1-1, the very classic 
Oh, sorry. So the very classic belief about John one one is is the reference of Genesis one one two three. In the beginning, what God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and the darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So there's a spirit of God. Okay. And verse three, and God said. So God spoke. God said, "Let there be light," and there was light. So it's it's the same thing in chap in verse four. In Him was light, and the light was the light of man. So it's very kind of similar, and how they start uh, John one one and Genesis one one is very similar starting. But here in John one one, it's very controversial. It's very mystery that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So do we have do we have two gods the God the Father and God the Word? Do we, can we can can we believe on that? So this is the thing. Remember that there is a God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So do we have two gods? The Bible says we only have one God, the Father. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. So there's a um, there's a, a Word and God. So if we use the reference in Genesis one one two three that there's a spirit of God. Remember that there's a spirit of God, and who is that spirit? That is the spirit of God in the New Testament. That is also known as Holy Spirit, right? And here is a thing. In John six six to three, we can say in this verse that let's read it first. John six six to three it says, It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profited nothing, the words that I spake unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the words of Jesus Christ, they are spirit and they are life. Okay? So the word of Jesus Christ are spirit, and also in Ephesians six seventeen it says this very clear. Let's read Ephesians six, this verse very clear, seventeen, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So there's a Spirit and the word of God here. So there's um there's a similarities between spirit and the word of God. So when Jesus Christ died, we can we can tell that Jesus Christ not a spirit. Jesus Christ has a bones and flesh. In in Luke twenty four, verse verse thirty eight to thirty nine. Why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your heart? Behold my hands and my feet, that is, it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, hath ye see me have. So Jesus Christ is not a spirit in physical things, but a glorified body, and he have a, and he had a flesh and bones. But you don't have a blood. But there is a thing. How about in 1 Corinthians 15.45? Let's read that verse. 15.45 It says, is this. And so, it is written, The first man Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. So this is Jesus Christ, the second Adam. The, sec the last Adam made a quickening spirit, or life-giving spirit. So Jesus Christ became a life-giving life -giving spirit. So how he became a life-giving spirit at the same time have a flesh and bones. Why? Because in Romans, we can read this verse. In Romans 8 verse 9, it says, and continue, But ye are not in flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you, now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So you need to have the spirit of Jesus Christ before to have the spirit of God. 
and continue, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, the spirit of whom? The spirit of God, the spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you and dwell in us. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So that is the reason why Jesus Christ became the quickened spirit. Not because he is the spirit of, of, of God. But Christ has his own, had his own spirit. But you should have the spirit of Christ first so you can have the spirit of God. Okay? So, because the, in the Bible, we can tell that the Word of God is the Spirit of God. That's why Jesus Christ said, The words that I speak unto you is, is, is Spirit and life. And according to Revelation 1.16, we can see this verse, it's very interesting. 1.16, it says very clear. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was the sun shineth in his strength. So there's a term in his mouth, there's a sharp two-edged sword, and according to the Bible, the word of God is two-edged sword. In Hebrews 4 verse 12, it says, it's very clear, it says this, 4.12, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So that is the word of God that's sharper than any two-edged sword. And according to the Bible Revelation 1.16, that in his mouth, Christ's mouth, there's a sharp two-edged sword. That's why in Revelation 19.13, Jesus Christ called us the Word of God. Let's read 19.13. It's very, very clear and it's a very amazing verse that John sp spoke about. Revelation 19.13, it says this, And he was clothed with a vesture deep in blood, and his name called the Word of God. So Christ became, so Christ is the Word of God, and Christ, Christ is the word of God, so his and his mouth has the word of God because he spake the word of God. That's why he became the, the word of God. And Jesus Christ only spake the word of God and nothing else. That is the reason why that in the book of John it's very clear and also in John five thirty it says is this that I can I can of mine own self do nothing as I hear I judge and my judgment is just because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. So all the teachings of Jesus Christ is from God. So because so let's back to John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. As a reference in Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, that in Genesis 1.2, that the Spirit of God is with God. And I believe, as a clarification, that the Spirit of God is it's with God. That is the word of God. That's why the Bible says, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And how is that? How is that possible that the Spirit of God and, and the Word of God is the same thing? Let's read in Hob 33 verse 6. It says it's this. Verse 4, 33 verse 4. The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty had given me life. So that is the Spirit of God. In Psalms, Psalms 33 verse 6, it says it's this. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. So as a, as a reference again, 33-4 of the book of Job, the Spirit of God hath made me and the breath of Almighty had given me life. As a reference again in 33.6 of the book of Psalms, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. So the word and the spirit of God is the same thing. 
That's why in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's why in Genesis 1, 1, 1, Genesis 1, 1 to 2, the earth was without form and void, the darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. So what is the purpose of the Spirit of God? Move upon the face of the water. Of course, that is the presence of God. That is the power of God for the creation of all everything. That's why in John 1, 1, anything made that was made is by Him. The same was in the beginning with God, that is the Spirit of God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Or, and according to the original Greek, all things were made by it, and without it was not anything made that was made. But we're using the King James Version, and that's totally fine. And all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Yes, that's totally fine. Okay? Because without the Word of God, there is nothing. Okay? And Jesus Christ has a, as a, as a, as a, as a claim in 17.5. It says, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So there's a glory of Jesus Christ before the world was. So Jesus Christ was claiming a glory from the Father before the world was. So what is that glory? Is that means that Jesus Christ existed before? It, can we accept that? That there's a two persons of God? Can God um, have a helper or Jesus Christ is the, the, the hand of God, the creator, and God is the cre over all creator? Can we accept that? It's very confusing. But if we accept the, this fact that this in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, we can accept that there's only one God. And how is that? Because the Spirit of God and God Himself, in according to this verse, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10 to 11, is very, very clear. Let's read and open your mind about this verse because this is very important. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 to 11, it says it's this. But God hath revealed them, revealed them unto us by His Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. So let's compare the Spirit of God and the Spirit of the man. So, in the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God searcheth the deep things of God. And in verse 4, in verse 11 I mean, the, the spirit of man searches the deep things of man. Can I ask you as a human, as a man as well, is your spirit a different spirit from you? Is, for example, this is my spirit and this is me. Do we have a two distinction spirit? Or is he a, have his own person? Or are we the same thing? Is my spirit the same as me? Yes, of course. Because as, I, as myself, I know myself that I'm the same person. I am one person. That is God. God's, per, God's spirit is not another person of the Godhead or the Trinity or the member of the Trinity. The spirit of God is God himself. It is the, the presence of God. It is a thought of God. It is a plan of God. It is a word of God, spoken word of God. The word of God is not another person, but representing God himself. That's why Jesus Christ called God in Hebrews 1.8. Because Christ representing God. Christ representing God. In Colossians 1.15, he is the image of the invisible God. So God and his spirit is not two distinction persons. No, there's only one God and accept that. Accept that. Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, there's, there's no two gods there. How about Genesis 1.26? It's a foreknowledge that he talked about his son in the future. But Christ is not existing before with God. It is his spirit. And remember when Christ became a person and, and conceived by the womb of Mary, what happened? The Spirit came down. And let's read Matthew 1.1. 1, 1. Matthew 1, 20 to 23 is very, very clear. It says it's this. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, 
fear not to say unto the married thy wife for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost and she shall bring forth a son thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying behold a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted God with us that's why in Matthew 18:20, if we are two or three gathered in Christ's name he is in the midst of them it doesn't mean God's presence is without us no because in Christ's name God with us that is the purpose of that the Spirit of God and God is the same thing the Word of God and God the Father is the same thing it's the presence of the Lord it's the presence of God it's a free it's a it's a thought of God it's a it's a plan of God it's a word of God spoken word of God but the word of God John 1 14 made flesh became flesh and that is the Holy Spirit and that is that is the word of God or the Holy Spirit and, and the Bible says that it says that for which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost okay so the Holy Ghost is a spirit it's a presence of God it's um it's a power of God so so the womb of Mary created a baby and that is Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is not pre-existed uh, um, another person of God, but he was became a person. Okay, he became has his own he he has his own life. That according to John, let's read that God gave him his own life. In John five twenty six, if I'm right, it it says that for as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. So. Christ became have a life in himself. Jesus Christ don't have life eternal past. But he be, he has a life because God the Father gave him life of himself. You understand what I meant to say? And that's why Jesus Christ in New Testament became his title is the word of God because he spoke the word of God. His mouth had the word of God. He spoke the pure word of God. That's why if you, if you are all always asking why why revelation why in revelation Christ claiming to be alpha and omega while he claiming that he was the 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 first and the last why he claiming that because he was speaking the word of God why is claiming in John 8 John 8 40 that before Abraham was born I am because he was the word of God he was claiming the fact that he is the word of God but before his flesh and bones, Christ is in the knowledge of God, in the in the in the in the thought of God, in the word of God, in the plan of God. That's why that is the spirit of God. That's why Christ, when he died and rose again, his body w don't have blood anymore. But he was lived in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, God, that is God's spirit, was leave it in him that's why he kept being alive you know what i meant to say but in but christ in the beginning was a thought from god was a wisdom from god was a knowledge of god that's why in isaiah 11 2 it says it's very clear it says it's this in the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him and the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of fear of the lord Okay, that's why in, in Proverbs 8 he was personified. Okay, because God foreknown predestinate Jesus Christ from the beginning. And I can prove that in Romans in Romans 8 29 it says it's this. It's very, very clear and it's very, very important that it says in Romans 8 29 it says For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren so Jesus Christ is not our father he is our brethren he is our brother he is the firstborn he is our big brother okay so God wants us to be the image of his son 
That's why in Genesis 1.26, when he created Adam, God created man in, in his image. And, and how God, God, God said that? Let us make man in our image. Yes, in, 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 in literal sense, he, God is talking, talking with his angels. But actually, he was talking predestinate for no from the beginning with his son. Because he, because that son is from his blood. Okay. That Adam was the first man that created holy, righteous. But Adam committed sin. That's why Christ became the second Adam. That's why Christ became the last Adam. Why? Because the first Adam committed sin. But these last days, he spoke unto us by his son. The brightness of his glory in the image of his person. Hebrews 1 3. Let's read that verse. So, we can tell that. God said, At the hundred times and in diverse manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, had in this last day spoken unto us by his Son, whom he had appointed of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory in the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So John 1.1 1, 1 is not who God. That is God the Father himself. But his thought became the word of God, became, became flesh, I meant. In John 1.14, and no man has seen God at any time, but the only, the only, only Son, the only begotten Son of God, He has declared of Him. Because no man can see God. According to the Bible in Colossians 1.15, that God is invisible. But Christ, we can see Christ as Christ became a human, Christ is, became like us, right? So Christ teach us that I'm an image of God. That who's, who's who in, 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 in John 14 it says is this. John 14 is very clear. In John 14, 7 it says is this. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. In 9, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, then shew us the Father? Believest thou that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. So that's why if you see Christ, you see the Father. Because He is the image of God. That's why if you hear the word of Christ, you hear the word of God. And that's a simple. So that is John 1.1. 1, 1. We, we only have one God. And we only have one Lord. That he became Lord because God made him Lord. And every tongue should confess. And every knee shall bow. That Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Thank you for watching. And I hope that you understand the, the mystery of John 1.